Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo urges Nigerian youths to quit complaining about the country's challenges and instead build the future they desire. And Plateau State House of Assembly criticizes or crisis worsen as the embattled speaker Abok Ayuba and 10 others are arrested. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has urged, uh, charged Nigerian youth to stop complaining about the country's challenges. He ins insisted uh, that we move past the issues and build a future that the youth desire by focusing on what is right. He encouraged them not to inherit the biases and prejudices of their parents, seizing their opportunities to contribute their own quota to Nigeria. The vice president said building a nation is an in intergenerational endeavor that requires the impute of all, hence the need for youths to be innovative. On the agitation for leadership, Shibajo said Nigerian youths should explore the right channels in communicating their grievances rather than resort to destruction and violence. Well, joining us to discuss this is Uche Chuta. He is a political analyst and, of course, we have Kunle Lawal. He's the Executive Director, Electoral College, Nigeria. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, Mimi, for having us on your show. Great. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. I, I, I'm going to start with you, Uche. Um, I, I'm going to still categorize you as a Nigerian youth. I mean, yeah, thank goodness, I uh, <laughs> thank goodness um, the People's Democratic Party, uh, after their convention, had a 25-year-old emerge as a youth leader for once, as opposed to what used to be before. So I can actually categorize you as a Nigerian young person. But looking at the vice president's statement, I want to start with the opening statement. He's charged Nigerian youth uh, to look past the challenges that Nigeria is currently facing and build a future they desire by focusing on what is right. Let's look at the realities that we're facing in Nigeria and you know the challenges of Nigeria. Uh, I'm curious, how do you separate that and look to the future if you cannot address today's problems? Yeah, exactly. So it beguiles me. I, I, I don't understand how you look past the problems and move forward. If you do a random sampling of 10 youths, young people on the street and ask them uh, if you have a chance to leave the country, will you leave? At least 70% of them, that's 7 out of 10, will say they want to leave. So that means that the environment doesn't allow them to express themselves for them to become who they are supposed to be. We, it doesn't allow your potential energy to turn into kinetic energy. And um, government should show its seriousness in the small things. How does government show the interest of the young people? education. Make sure the education is top-notch. You're educating the, the youth populace with skills that they can use in the 21st century. They're not doing that. Um, encourage businesses, young businesses, entrepreneurs. There are young people who have started, innovated, and done different things in the world of fintech. How does government encourage them? Taxes, closing them down, shutting their bank accounts. So, I, I don't understand. There's, there's, a, there's a disconnect between what government is saying and the reality on ground. I mean, many times when the VP talks, it's almost as if he's he's not part of the government. He, he speaks like someone who is dissociated from the present government. But if he if he's part of this government, he should understand that there's a disconnect in his words and the policy direction of his government, of which he's the vice president. Uh, Kune, you are of the Electoral College and you do not just talk about elections. You're trying to also, um, one way or the other, um, reposition the um, minds of young people and, you know, looking at the good in Nigeria, trying to forge to, for, for, towards a better Nigeria. So I'm going to go back to the same statement. The, the vice president um, said that we need to focus on what is right. Now, there are a few positives in the country 
I mean, if we can point to them, uh, there's, there should be some things that are happening that are good in this country. Can we at least focus on what is right and not necessarily the challenges, in the words of the Vice President, can we look past those challenges and focus on what is right? And in this regard, what would you think the Vice President is terming right? Is it the right things that are happening in the country, the good things, the positives? Is that it? So um, for me, um, the positives in this country are a little li too little to spur anyone off in the right direction. I also kind of agree with the Vice President. Yes, the youth of this country must be a little bit strategic. But as much as we must be strategic, I think what we must recognize, which of course the vice president is not putting into cognizance, is that there must be a foundation for that rise to occur. Anything that has happened in Nigeria, which was developmental, which also could help improve youth participation or a youth target towards um, government or business or the economy has actually been accidental. It has never been intentional. So as how, much as how do you the mean? How do you mean accidental? I'd like I'd like for us to dwell there. What do you mean by it's been accidental? You're saying that there's not been any deliberate effort in changing, uh, you know, uh, the, the 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 lives of the average Nigerian person, including the young person. You're saying that every good thing that's happened to us was not to to totally planned out. So I'll give an example. With the with the with the with the pr progress seen in um, fintech industries, there will become of a few fintech companies available. This is not they didn't exist because the the foundation for them was built by the CBN or policies were built to support or to to create such things. These things came out of innovation and thirst and direction, of course, which was shown by the youth of Nigeria. So I will call them accidental because. They created quite, I wouldn't say a chaotic situation in finance, which resulted in a need for the services. But I, I would say a rather unstable position for the youth to thrive in such uh, in, in the financial technology world by the actions taken by, uh, of course, the CBN or the misdirection taken by CBN and banks in the financial technological industry. So yeah. that's what I mean by that. So um, if the, we had a room full of young people and this was the statement that the, or message that the vice president was sending to these young persons, how do we even break this down for them to even take the message? And not even, we're not even talking about the messenger, shooting the messenger here. We're talking about taking the message. How do we look past the challenges? He's okay. also talked about the fact that we need to direct our grievances through the proper channels. We're in a democracy, so I'm going to ask you, what are these proper channels that these young people, because I'm sure that if we had a room full of them, they'd ask you, so how do we go about it? How do we even go about fudging ahead with all of the challenges that seem insurmountable to us? Okay, um, I'll say that um, the new bill passed by the National Assembly, which allows for, for um, the direct primaries instead of the indirect, abolishing the delegate system is a key way for the youth, of course, to key into participatory politics. And, um, but this can only occur if it occurs to the youth to join political parties. As long as they abstain from political parties, this will not change the status quo. Now, as regards uh, maybe um, innovation generally in Africa, uh, we would say um, the public service in Nigeria has been a little behind there, which has allowed for you know, loopholes which the youth can cash in on with ingenuity. But we must always continue to recognize that as much and as strategic as this has been, the youth too need to get, get on their own target and say, okay, Rome was not built in a day. What do we want to achieve in the next five years? What do we want to achieve in the next 10 years? I'll say, of course, we cannot rely on government for everything because the foundation, of course, has been a little unstable. But, of course, if we're not thinking of ourselves, we might be able to create a future that we, of course, can ride on. I, I, I think the vice president is right in a way you get. But the countries that have achieved this movement, that is moving from or their youth have achieved this movement, their basics that have to be in place. For example, the rule of law, which hasn't been fully adhered to in the country. There has to be 
a careful, intentional move by the government to ensure that youths prosper with SMEs, with or even a participatory need by political parties. You know, for people to to get into participatory politics. And I'll give this example. Yes, we must commend the PDP, a 25-year-old being in a national youth leader position. But I'll ask the question, who is supposed to be in the position, a 95-year-old? It would be a little impressive if we saw a national publicity secretary of the PDP or the APC. Or oh, no, Kule, Kule, I, 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 I'd like to come time. in there. Kule, um, I know I've followed politics in Nigeria for a long time. We've had 50-year-olds occupy that office. We've had 60-year-olds emerge as party youth leaders. I mean, you and I have been in this country, so it, it is worthy of note, whether, whether, yeah, you, yeah, well, whether you agree or not. Note. But it's, but it's not but something it's not we should so celebrate. Much. Of course, I do understand that. But yes, then yes, this yes, is a departure from saying. the north. Worthy of note. Yes, yes. Worthy of note, but not celebratory like we've won a Grand Prix. It's not yet at the, that point yet. So we'd like to see maybe a chairman of a, that kind of political party being under 40. Or would like to see maybe the minister of information or the minister of, uh, you know, or the, the head of NCC being someone who's actually young and in tune with, you know, IT and innovation generally. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, great. I'm going back to Uche. Uche, um, uh, as, as much as Kune has said the, the, the most important things, which is the things that government need to do on the path of government, as young people, have we also positioned ourselves to be able to take on these responsibilities or these opportunities if they were to present themselves? We already know that there are so many negatives in this country uh, that we need positives to somewhat, you know, override them. Um, but what um, opportunities have been created for the average Nigerian to thrive? Um, yeah. This is the question that I'm asking. Has government done its job? Because it's not enough. I'm, I'm thinking if government says mm. this, this and that, you need to do this and that. What are the things that have been put in place to make me be able to do those things? Yeah, so let's go to the basics. The basics, what young people, young people are not asking for much. They're only asking for a means to earn a living. So there are two things. You earn a living by one, you have a job, you go to a job, an employer, an employer pays you at the end of the month, end of the week, however, or end of the day, however you earn with wages. Or you start up a business, you have enough profits that you can save, eat, take care of your basics, provide food, shelter, basics this is lacking that's all you'd want you know so first of all if you take a hungry young person and put into politics he's he's definitely going to behave like a hungry person meaning he, his vote can be bought his support can be bought i mean he's, he's, his morals can be bought he has no integrity basically he has no economic power so for example um it might be more difficult for you to convince, for me to, for me to, to lose my integrity because of money, or maybe even kundi or everything, if I'm in politics, because the politician is not feeding me. I do not depend on any stipends which the politician or the political system can provide for me to make my decisions. But we need an empowered youth. So the government should think about jobs. It's as simple. We need economic empowerment. Even before political empowerment, it has to be economic empowerment. What skills is the, gov the government is the government pushing so youths are more empowered to increase the amount of wages? We live in a global economy whereby you don't have to live in the U.S. to work for an American company. What skills do American companies need? How are we? How is the government saying? You know what? Let's take advantage of these young people and create opportunities for them to serve. Other countries, you know, we speak English. English is the number one business language in the world. India identified that and they said, you know what? We have masses and millions of young people. Let's take advantage. Let's let, let's let's train our, our, our youth to, to 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 power call centers all around the world. Let's train our youth to provide technical support all around the world. All they need to do is put the infrastructure there, the telecom infrastructure. They have to also put, make sure that they had the internet and all these different things to allow them to do that. What is the government doing to empower the Nigerian youth economically? That's all. We don't even care about the politics. Economics, 
how are they creating jobs? How are they creating opportunities for their companies to succeed? Instead, they're stifling economic growth. They're closing down companies. They're bringing taxes on the companies. This is not, this is no sign of, if they control your economy, they control your politics. So when we talk about politics, we're even missing the point. The VP knows what to do. Jobs have to be created. We don't want stipends. We don't want trade our money where they share money during elections. You know, what we want is economic empowerment, create opportunities, create the environment, think, think, strategize on our behalf. What's our ICT national policy? How does it fall in line with us taking advantage of the global economy? Yeah, These are the things but, we but, 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 but let me, if I could come in there just for a minute. Um, can we only leave this? Because, you know, it's very easy when we say, it's very easy to blame everything on Buhari. And I'm not in any way also speaking for President Buhari. Uh, I'm just mm. saying uh, anything goes bad. Ah, Buhari is the problem. Um, but should we only be leaving this at the doorstep of our presidency? What about the state governors, the local government chairman, the councillors, the people who are saddled with the responsibility of taking government to those who need government the most? Because I think that sometimes we forget about those people that are really directly um, responsible to us and we leave everything at the foot of the federal government. No, all of them are responsible. So when I say government, I don't necessarily mean only Buhari. All of them are responsible. The state governors, the House of Reps, the senators, the local government chairman, they're all responsible in their only two way or the other because they can do things at the very local level. If a local government chairman says, you know what, the youths in my, lo in my local government, I want to empower them. I want to build some center where they can come there. There's internet, there's access to network. You know, they can do that at a micro level. They're not doing this. They're only interested in their pockets. You know, so when I say government, at this point of time, you have to go beyond blaming Buhari. In as much as, yes, the head is rotten and so everything else should be rotten, but still, the, everybody has a responsibility. Everybody can do something. But it's people in government that have to push this. Also, leaders of, of the big, big, big companies, you know, the corporate Nigeria too, they need to be interested in taking the next step forward, you know, the doyens of the industry. How is Dangote, for example, empowering the young people for the next generation? It's not just by selling cement and creating companies who sell cement. What exactly is he doing? You know, so these are the kind of questions we have to ask. Um, and this is what needs to be done. Hmm. Let me push you further uh, uh, on the, I know that you're not an education expert, but you're a doctor. Uh, you've got a doctorate. Um, Let's look at the education uh, in Nigeria and how it affects our young persons. Because you see, um, I went to federal university, a public school, um, all the way through from um, my, my secondary to university. I went to a public school. How has our education sector um, helped to mold the average young person for the reality that awaits them after graduation? We're all, all about um, paper education, which I don't have a problem with. But then um, in, in, in saner climes, you see people do holiday jobs, they volunteer. The, the spirit of volunteerism is nowhere to be found in Nigeria. It's one of the things that I openly advocate for. But you see a young person who wants to run an internship and he's asking you or she's asking you how much you're going to pay them. So the experience is not as prioritized as the money they think they're going to make from the experience. So um, how, what role has this played in molding us? Because we're churning out more and more students at the end of every academic year. Where do these people go? I know we've talked about opportunities, but has that also played a role? in how yes, yes. much, you know, how bad the situation of things are. Yes, okay, I just want to just correct you that my PhD actually is an affidavit PhD, you know, so it was a joke of oh, our president. Oh, it's but, not, oh, okay. It's not, but it's okay. okay. Education, for example, here, like from when they're in primary school, um, the students, for example, on Friday, are supposed to volunteer and do things and help some old people's homes or serve here or there or for, work for the city. It's not in our culture, it's not in our educational system, it's not ingrained for them to see, to work about our service, about internship. This is not ingrained. If, if this is, and that's the full rule of government. If they institute that as part of educational policy at all levels, where children, students at all levels understand about community service, understand about internship, understand about, you know, it's not necessarily you work for money, you know, then we'll, our ideas will change, experiences will, will add up, you know, we will we'll gather the skills necessary so we are 
employable. Because the reality of the fact is that the Nigerian youth is unemployable, generally speaking. But the reason I won't blame the Nigerian youth for being unemployable, I will blame the system that educated so that, that made this person pass to the 6334 system or whatever they've changed the system to and is now unemployable. Why wasn't it in, ingrained into the system? Well, we have the NYSC. What's, we, we both, all of us went to NYC. We know what happens there. You have three weeks in camp. Do you think that first three weeks in camp, they have all these different kinds of seminars. Come and learn this, come and learn this. How do you learn that <laughs> within three weeks? Everybody just excited to be in camp and, hey, what's happening, you know? Then after the three weeks, there's something called posting. You get posted to somewhere and they reject you. You say, we don't need a teacher. We, I mean, we know what the NYC is. On paper, maybe yes, but in reality, <laughs> the NYC system is not working it's not enough this should have happened from when we're in primary school secondary school and through university hmm. interesting let me come to you um again um Kunle, this this is about the rise in crime um amongst our young persons and i'm not just talk, talking about thuggery or violence i'm talking about advanced free fraud we see a lot of yahoo boys now we're seeing the efcc on the tails of more and more young people. I, I, I brought a friend of mine who came in from out of the country to a hotel that was close to my, my office. And I could count the number of teenagers who were lodging in that hotel. And I was wondering what they were doing there. But of course, a few weeks later, we saw you know, the police rounding up a lot of young people and saying you know, that it was a Yahoo den. But then we're also looking at the issue of prioritizing money, you know, riches, we're glorifying it. Um, so I'm going to ask, is society playing a role in how our young people have turned out and how it's going as we speak? The fact that we're having more and more people engaged in advanced free fraud, more and more people engaged in money laundering, just looking for the quick, quick um, money schemes to get to the top. Uh, is that also government's problem or is that a societal problem? Kunle, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. So, um, how, society, how society has played a role. Of course, you must say that if our society, which of course our culture, which is basically culture is defined as the way of life, celebrates um, riches without necessarily... Kunle, are you there? Kunle, are you there? Can you hear me? Class, hard thing. I'm saying it is. I, I'm here. Hello? Okay. We lost I'm you for here. a second. Yes, Hello? go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So if you have a culture. I think that we're having connection issues with you. So I'm going to toss that question back to Uche. Uche, can you help us out with that question? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's sad. Um, it's, it's a function of the uh, culture. And this, I'm not going to blame government too much in this. Um, we, we, we we lost our values. We, I don't know where. Sure, which is a way of life. We celebrate on a system. Oh, we oh Kunle, Kunle, can you just hold on? Because we're having connection issues with you. Let's just allow Uche and then let's see if we can get you back on. Yeah, we've lost our values. Um, so I, I can't blame government on this. Our values where we, 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 we glorify wealth. We don't, without asking the source of the wealth. Um, in those days, I'm hoping they follow there were those days, if a, if a child comes back home and shows some money and the parents don't know exactly how he's getting the money, the parents will, refuse, will chase the child out of the house and say, please don't, I don't want your money. You know, but our parents are not questioning this wealth. Uh, our traditional rulers are not questioning some of this wealth. They give you some of these people um, traditional titles without a question, how, how did you make your money? What is your business? How did you do it? You know. I mean, they don't even try and cover up their tracks and say, okay, let's even do some kind of kind of money laundering and have a, sh a cover of our business. They openly say, I'm doing Yahoo, Yahoo, and they're, they're proud of our teacher and, they, and, and sing about it and, and do everything. So our, our values have eroded. It's, it has taken us steps back. Um, and it's because we glorify wealth. And we, we started glorifying wealth from our politicians. How can a politician, we hail our politicians for stealing our money. We give him so much respect and say, ah, this guy is rich, he's loaded. We give it, we rev revere them, we almost worship them when they throw around money and they have all these security guys around them and mobile police. Where at, at these are people living off the Commonwealth and we give them so much respect. We talk, you should see young people talking about 
politicians, how they've been hailing them, they're giving them names and glorifying them. They've turned them into Greek gods when they talk about them. And it's our fault. These are common criminals who have this occupying political office. And we don't treat them like that. We worship them. So the young people say, oh, they're worshiping the politicians who are still in our commonwealth. So I can as well do my own. And these politicians are chasing these young people because they don't want competition. They don't want these young people to start compete against them and have money and now come and challenge them because that's what some young people did. Some young people actually did Yahoo 419 fraud and entered into politics and entered into office. In fact, many of the people in politics right now were in fraud <laughs> in one way or the other. And I'm sure there's one or two governors here or there. I'm not going to mention any names who were in fraud and are now in political office. That is the path. So it's our system. It's, 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 that, that's, it's what it is. Um, Kunle, let me see. Let's try and see if you, you're back with us. Can you hear me, too, uh, Kunle? Yes, I can hear you. I'm back then. Okay. I know you're going to add to what um, you know Uche has said, but I also want to um, ask another question as to where are the mentors that these young people can look up to? Who... Who can they look at, look at in society as we speak? I'm talking about today's Nigeria to say, oh, this is my mentor. Aside from the few uh, rich guys who are the Otedalas or the um, Dangotes and in Lumelus of this world or this country, um, who can they really look up to to say, this is my mentor, I'm, this is who I'm going to fashion my life after, whether they're com coming from rich backgrounds or very humble backgrounds in addition? Um, you know, like uh, I and Uche have stated earlier, which I will also buttress, our entire system is based on currency. So everything you talk, talk about is currency related. So you can't even be a mentor in Nigeria if you're not offering a cash back. And I'm sure Uche, who's been in politics and been around Nigeria, will attest to this, and I can attest. If someone asks in Nigeria, I, hey, I want to be your mentee. Trust me, you're receiving a bill of le nothing less than 200k in a week or two. And that's the system we have. We believe mentorship is when I give you money and money comes back. We don't look at intellectual understanding. We do not weigh, we weigh a lot, poor, lot of poor emphasis in strategic planning or, or in even using the resource available provided by a mentor. So it's all a societal breakdown or a cultural breakdown on our ideas on what meritocracy is and what, you know, being successful is. I'll tell you, Nigerians do not understand successful without a huge bank account. Hmm. You can be successful and trends that you push can change the course of history, be it in politics, be it in business, be it in banking, and you might never be financially buoyant, hmm. as you like to translate. And because they don't understand this, few mentees subscribe to mentors uh, or subscribe to, men or, uh, subscribe to mentors that can't provide financial uh, backing. And that is a serious issue. Okay. Can we change this? Can we change this? Yes, we can. How but do, we, how do we go about that? Orientating our minds. Yeah, we, we will need to build a new culture. I've always been a, been a proponent of saying we need to build a Nigeria, a tribe, Nigeria. We have so many ethnicities in Nigeria. The one tribe that is marginalized the most is the Nigeria. Mm. Well, Uche Chuta, uh, Kunle Lawal, thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much for having us on your show. All right. Thank you very much for your pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you for staying with us. Coming up on Plus Politics, the two state House of Assembly crisis worsens as the besieged speaker, Abok Ayuba, is arrested. We'll take a short break now and we'll return. Stay with us.